Welcome to Haxby Shed on this chilly morning. I got a couple of questions from viewers and rather than writing long responses, it's easier just to show you. Well, the first question was from Alex who says he has an old Harrison 140 at his school and the question was about the tool post. Now, I've got a multi-fix on here at the moment, but here's the original tool post that came with the lathe. Now there's numerous different tool posts, so it may not be this one that he has. But anyway, he's got something confusing about this handle here and it's sticking and, um, and, and so on. So I'll just show you what it does. Anyway, we'll get this multi-fix off. So I'm just using a 5 16 uh, Allen key in the top here. And when you've loosened this one, it just slides off. And this is the original T-nut from the bottom. I just reused it when I made this fixing. So we'll use that with this original tube post. Ha. Oh dear, there's a go there goes my phone. All right, so this is what we're starting with. Never do things live, folks. I realise I kept the screw with the original tool post. There it is inside. So we take this handle off. Okay. Drop this on here. You can see I've clamped on the pivot. Drop that on. That rotates to any position you want. Put the washer on. Screw the handle on. Okay. Rotate, lock. Rotate, lock. I think it's as simple as that. Ah, now then, here's possibly the problem that he's seeing. <laughs> Hold that handle over and uh, you can rotate it. If you let it drag, you're trying to adjust it. This is screwing this way and it's locking it as you're trying to adjust it. So whether that's what he means, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, there's an Allen key, Allen grub screw there. You can take that out. And I'm pretty sure you can oil it through that. You know, sometimes these swivels stick on the post. So that might be part of the reason. It's very difficult when somebody describes a problem in a comment to figure out exactly what they mean. Okay, yes, yeah, so. So there's that grub screw I'm just talking about. And that enters into this big chamber here, this one, and the oil runs out onto this. I don't know, maybe that's it. I hope that helps Alex. Good luck with it. Well, the other question came from somebody using the handle Archivio. I don't know if that's his name or a company, but still, he says he has a union graduate lathe, which I take to be a wood turning lathe, I'm not sure and he's using an IMO Jaguar Cub Inverter and a remote control. Now it might not be the same remote control as this one, but anyway. So he's got run, stop, uh, jog, forward, reverse. So four switches. And um, he didn't say whether he had this speed control, but even so, he's had it quite a while and now it's become intermittent. He's changed a number of switches. He finds to get it to start, he has to keep toggling the switches, something like that anyway. He can't find the problem. So, you know, by that stage, what I would do is I'd get myself a, a, a DC voltmeter. I'd go onto the 24 volt line and I'd start tracing it through because these things are fairly simple inside. Mine's got this speed control display on it, but that's because I added that. I had the reverse switches and I had the jog switch before I put this in, but they are pretty simple really. So there's just a relay and those switches and this pot and that's all. So use the meter, 24 volts, and just trace through. You can start at the inverter or you can end at the inverter. I'd probably 
start from the inverter and work along and just see where that 24 volts starts to become intermittent. Okay, that's probably the best I can do there. I hope that's useful. Thanks for watching.